Welcome to Table Bible Studies with Dan and Ben. New studies are posted every Thursday. We're concluding a study of the life of Abraham today as Dennis and Benedicta discuss how blessing was brought to the whole world through Abraham. Abraham was someone who heard the voice of God. We today ought to be people who hear the voice of God one way or another. No, yes. I've never heard an audible voice where mm-hmm. it talks to me like the television is talking, mm-hmm. but God can communicate. Yes. All right, let's look at a couple of verses in the New Testament uh, with Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul. This one is in Galatians. So chapter 3 and verse 8, it says, The scripture for seeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand. Mm. So that's an interesting way of putting it. God was preaching the gospel Mm. beforehand to Abraham, saying, in you, Abraham, all the nations shall be blessed. God is saying, Abraham, you may think of yourself as just a little man, in an obscure place, Mm. but in you, all the nations of the earth are going to receive a blessing. Wow, wow, wow. That is remarkable, you know? Yeah. And uh, when you are just um, coming out from somewhere and uh, following the direction of God and the voice of God, Nobody yeah. will understand you just, you know, moving around. Yeah. You know, somebody will be like, you're yeah, just going in a circle. Why are you? <laughs> <laughs> and Abraham did go in circles a lot, you know, wandering yeah. to Egypt and then back and then here and then there and setting right. up a, an altar to worship and then moving over here. Uh, you might look at his life and say, well, boy, that's kind of a pointless life. Yeah. Moving here, moving there. Miserable life. Why, you know, you should just do something with your yeah. life. Yeah. Why don't you make something of yourself, Abraham? Yeah. Because when you're following the voice of God, it will look stupid to everybody that's yeah. watching you. Well, and I can <laughs> Identify because I've been in a lot of places. <laughs> so anyway, God says, in you all the nations shall be blessed. Mm. And then Paul goes on to say, so then those who are of faith, that is faith in Jesus, mm. are blessed with believing Abraham. Mm. So we get that blessing. Yes. Now, if we look a little bit further, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yeah. So the law has a curse attached with it if you don't keep it. Okay. And if you don't believe that, read Deuteronomy 28. And God just declares curse after curse, misery after misery, sickness after sickness for those who don't obey his law. My goodness. And there's a curse of the law. Now, the problem is nobody ever keeps it all the way. Not you, not me, not Moses, not anybody. Uh And if you don't keep the law, you're under a curse. Mm. So Paul says Christ has redeemed us from the curse. In other words, that curse no longer applies to you. Yes having become a curse for us. So when he was on the, and it says, for it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. When Jesus was hanging on that cross, he was taking on the curse that you earned and I earned and everybody else earned because we've all sinned. So the curse of humanity, because Mm. none of us are law keepers. There was only one person who ever kept the entire law. That was Mm. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. He kept the law. Mm. Nobody else ever did. And yet this man who kept the law perfectly became a curse on the cross to the point where he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Forsaken me, good And the demons were taunting him. The people were taunting him. Mm. He became sin for us, the Bible says. He took on our curse. Why? So that he could impart his blessing. His blessing comes upon us. So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So we Gentiles along with any believing Jews, Mm. inherit the blessing of Abraham. God had said to Abraham, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. But he's talking about in Christ, in Jesus Christ and all who put their faith in him, African, American, Asian, Hispanic, Mm. doesn't matter. Mm -mm. All the nations, all peoples can be equally blessed in Christ Jesus. And God calls that the blessing of Abraham. This blessing said to this (laughs) patriarch, (laughs) this tent dweller, he never had a home. He never (laughs) built a home. He dwelt in tents. Even though he was a wealthy man, he could have afforded to build a home, but he never did. He never settled down. Like we said, he kind of circled around around the region. You know, I may be like identify with him on that because yeah. if he start building houses and building uh, all, all kinds of, uh, you know, to dwell permanently, yeah. God may knock on the door tomorrow, maybe not, uh, not knocking on the door, but, you know, Abraham, get your things together. Time you to move. Go. 
Call the realtor. Hello, I got to sell the house again. God said, move on. And I know people like that. that I know. They, they get in, in a new town, in a new ministry, and mm. then they stay there and they buy a house immediately. Yeah. And that's really not very smart to do unless God really tells you to. Mm. And because a lot of, in, in the case I'm thinking of, within three or four years, you know, you they had to move on, on yeah. and they had to sell their house, sometimes mm -hmm. at a tremendous loss, uh, sometimes not. So, uh, we need to be able to uh, be kind of free to move about if we need to. Now, we own a house, you know, or we're making payments on it. So it's not like we're against buying houses, uh, but uh, there is a time to stay loose and mobile and mm -hmm. free. And maybe that was how Abraham was. Anyway, the point I was trying to make was God said to this guy that never even owned a house and just moved around, mm. I'm going to bless the whole world. Mm. Through you now, Abraham probably didn't even know about the whole world. Yeah. He, he certainly didn't know about America because there was no America. Right. He didn't know about you know what was across the ocean. You know, in those days, they probably thought the Earth was flat, like mm. most of the world has had done until yeah. Columbus Day. So uh, he didn't know about the whole world. But God says the whole world, and God knew. God mm. knew we have a round world. He knew there'd yeah. be an America, there'd be an Africa, and all these other More places. More countries are gonna come up, and they're all gonna you know have their portion of believers now. You know, not all Americans are believers, not all yeah. Nigerians are believers, you know, or any other country, but... We have a good number of believers in Nigeria. Well, there are. Yeah. For sure. Uh, in fact, I would say percentage-wise, there are more more followers of Christ in yeah. Africa than there are in America. And, uh, and uh, you know, praise God for Africa, but sad for America. It, it used to be a higher percent, but we're kind of getting off track. Anyway, uh, there is a blessing attached to Abraham. Yeah. And uh, we who are in Christ become sons and daughters of Abraham. Right. And when Jesus told that story about Abraham and uh, the Lazarus and the rich man and Lazarus was in what? The bosom, bosom of, of Abraham. Abraham. He, Abraham was kind of like the head honcho in charge yes. of that part of Hades. Everybody were like, all my kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all my kids. <laughs> and in a sense, it's still true. We're, we're sort of his kids, although yeah. we are really children of the Heavenly Father. Yeah. But uh, a marvelous thing, and the life of Abraham, uh, it really reveals to us mm -hmm. there are blessings attached to hearing yeah. the voice of God and being obedient to that voice. Any final yeah, words as we I, wrap this up? You know, the final thought I have now is like that believing, you know, and the blessings um, kind of expanded Yeah, when you think of... Father Abraham coming up with the faith. And now, you know, we have a believer's, you know, kind of faith in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And that is like, you know, um, huge expansion of the faith. Yeah. And now we have all around the world, like you said, you know, from uh, Father Abraham, got kids and grandkids and great, great grandkids, all of us, <laughs> <laughs> you know, in faith. Yeah. And Jesus came. And, um, you know, in, in kind of increased us, increased the faith, uh, you know, uh, increased our faith in him. And, in, yeah. uh, and then in the same way, in the God that, you know, Father Abraham introduced um, right from the beginning. And uh, now we have more faith and more people and more, you know, generation, uh, you know, coming through believing in God that Abraham met and uh, had from and, you know, obeyed, like we discussed, in obedience. And uh, before you know it, you know, um, all around the world today, we are like uncountable. Yeah. You know, I don't know the number, but it's like uncountable. Well, as the stars of the sky, as right? The as of the stars of the sky. As the sand on the seashore. Right. So we are now, you know, you can't say, you know, this is a good number of Abraham kids and grandkids. All of us in faith, you know, I think that was where God was going in those days. Although Abraham had a bunch of kids, yeah. naturally, but spiritually, God was like, you're going to have a whole lot. Yeah. And when you trace Abraham right down uh, through his generations, mm. according to the scriptures, Isaac, Jacob, a yeah. few generations later comes Moses, and uh, then you have the Israelites in the wilderness, and then they come into Cain in the promised right. land. You've got Joshua, and uh, you, you go right on through. You've got the days of David. Yeah. You've got the prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Basically, what you're talking about is the history of the Jewish people. Yeah. Because they are the, the descendants of Abraham. Now, he had other descendants from Keturah and from Ishmael. Yeah. But God was mostly more interested in his descendants yes. through Sarah. Yes. And he made it clear that's where the blessing is going to mm -hmm. be. 
So we're talking about the Jewish people. When Jesus was born, the one they called Yeshua, yeah. Jewish young boy, and right. grew up to become a Jewish man and died on the cross for our sins. When Christianity arose, it was a Jewish uh, group. Yeah. They were all Jews until uh, a short time after that, Paul arises, starts taking the gospel to the Gentiles. What I'm saying is this, from Abraham on down, mm. the Jewish people, and then Jesus, and then it expands to the whole yeah, world. Yeah. But we owe a tremendous debt to the Jewish people. That's why <laughs> real evangelicals love the Jews. Yeah, we love uh, them. There's not a trace of anti-Semitism in us. We respect them because the, our heroes are all mm. Jews. Moses, yeah. David, Jeremiah, all these guys are Jews. Jesus, right. our Savior, is a mm. Jew. Mm. And an observant Jew, went to synagogue uh, every week and so yes. forth. So we thank God for the Jewish people. We owe them a tremendous debt. And certainly, uh, we respect and appreciate uh, what God did through them. God knew he wanted to reveal himself to the whole world, yeah. not just to the Jews, to the whole world. Yes. But he took a guy named Abraham, and then he created a people called the Jews, mm -hmm. called Israel. Mm -hmm. And through them, he began to speak. He began to do miracles. And uh, the, the Bible was written for God to say, not just his idea of being the God of Abraham, Isaac, yeah, and Jacob, yeah. The God of the Bible, mm. the God that Daniel served, the God that Isaiah spoke about, the God that David wrote about and yes. did such mighty uh, miraculous things. Uh, the, the God of the Bible uh, through the Jewish people yes. uh, comes our salvation. Again, getting back to that one statement, in you, Abraham, all the nations mm. of the world will be blessed. Mm. Thanks for watching our study of the greatest book ever written, the Bible. In addition to these Bible studies with Ben and me, I also share what I call video devos, which are short teachings I give on various Bible topics. These teachings are normally, but not always, posted on Mondays. Be sure and click the subscribe button and then click that bell icon and choose show all notifications. That way you'll be notified every time we post a new video. And if you're struggling with diabetes, check out my other channel, which is called Beat Diabetes. God bless you and see you again soon.